So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about some ways to make better videos. And these are all things that I've learned over the years of working in this industry. And all these tips come from the mistakes that I've made and ways that I've learned from those to end up making better videos. And I've been implementing all these tips in my workflow over the last like year or so. And I really think my videos have stepped up with emotion, storytelling, lighting, literally everything. I think it's a whole nother world from what I was doing before. And I always had this mental roadblock on trying to make better videos. And it was weird to try to figure out, but I think I kind of broke through that. Still learning, still growing. Without further ado, let's get into my ways of how to make better videos. So first things first, pre-production is your friend. Pre-production is anything you do in preparation for production. That could be storyboarding, shot listing, location scouting, finding music, thinking about the vibe and style of your edit. Being prepared in any way, whether it's a little bit or a lot, it'll help out a ton. Being prepared for your shoot will allow you to not have any guesswork while you're out on location. It'll free up all that mental space to get creative and to really get everything you need that you know you need to get. You're not wasting any time shooting stuff that you're not gonna use. You're not wasting time trying to figure out what to shoot next. You have the stuff you need to get and if you wanna get any pickups or fillers, you have the time and brain space to do that. So pre-production is super valuable. I love doing a little bit of shot listing. I don't really do full storyboards. I find music and I think about the style that I want my edit to be. I think simply being prepared like that allows me to make better videos because I know what I need to get. Sometimes it works when I go out and run and gun shoot and just film whatever, but sometimes those types of videos don't feel as cohesive or as thorough as the ones that I did pre-production on. The next tip is to work on your compositions. When I first started out, I was literally shooting anything. I didn't really have any rhyme or reason on why I was shooting it. I was just pointing the camera in shooting whatever was in front of me. And over time, I started to learn about the rule of thirds and how to implement that into my workflow. I think the rule of thirds are a great tool for anyone trying to work on their compositions. Going back to that, framing things up in the thirds allows you to have a nicer looking image straight off the bat. And of course, you can break that rule and you can move things around. But I think starting out, just going back to the basics and building on that foundation will allow you to have that second nature instinct to frame things up and then kind of tweak things from there. So ever since really trying to dive into the basics and work on my compositions, mainly working with the rule of thirds, I've seen my compositions get a lot nicer, get a lot cleaner. And I'm now starting to look for symmetry, center framing, looking for background elements to be in the thirds, foreground elements to be in the thirds. And I feel like as you start building up on that, you start putting all these pieces together that can make really solid and beautiful compositions. Whereas if you don't focus on that, you're kind of shooting from the hip and from instinct. And oftentimes I think putting in the practice and really training those skills will put us in a better situation than not. Once you really feel comfortable about the rule of thirds, get creative with it, get crazy and start framing things up in different ways than you have before. The next step is lighting, the most important aspect of our industry. Our cameras are basically capturing light and you can have any camera on the market. And if you have bad light, you're not going to get a nice looking image. For most scenarios, you want to backlight everything. Of course, when you're doing an interview, talking head setup, you have a key light that's being a front light. But for most things, you want to backlight everything, which means putting the light behind your subject, whether it's in frame or out of frame. I personally like putting things out of frame like over here so you're not getting the sun blowing out your image. And that is called upstage lighting, backlighting, whatever you wanna call it. Essentially, you're shooting into the shadow. So if you're shooting with the sun, you're not getting really any shape or depth on your subject. Faces often look washed out because there's no shadow there, but if you're shooting into the sun, AKA backlighting, you have a nice shadow on the camera side and the light is wrapping around the face, giving it a nice depth. If you're doing interview setups, you don't really want to backlight, you want to have your subject nice and lit, but that's a whole different subject for another time. Another aspect of this is finding motivating light. If you're using studio lights with natural light, you need to position your studio lights to be where the sun is shining light from. So with this frame here, I have the window here and you don't really know how long this window goes for. So it makes sense to put the light on the window side. If I were to put my studio light on this side, it would look a little off because you see that there's light coming in from this side. If I were to put the light on the other side, it would look fake and actually lit. This looks a little bit more natural than putting it on that side. So mess around with that and basically just find motivating light and position your light on that side. On top of that, you need to learn how to nail exposure. And beforehand, I simply thought it was just not crushing your shadows or clipping your highlights. And while that's important, it's a little bit more than that. With every camera, there's a base ISO for the certain gamma curve that you're using. With base ISO, it's super important to use with log because you get the cleanest looking image with the most dynamic range. And some cameras have dual base ISO, some don't. I think keeping your camera at the base ISO to get the cleanest looking image is super valuable 
and often overlooked with beginners. Another thing too is finding the middle gray value and you can use a gray card for this. I don't really expose this way. If you like exposing with middle gray, find the middle gray value for whatever log curve or gamma curve that you're using and start exposing with middle gray with a gray card. So for example, the way that I found out how to expose properly was shooting silhouettes. Amateur Thomas would try to get the shadows completely exposed, not necessarily exposed properly, but I was able to see every single shadow detail possible. And that often meant that I was blowing out the sky. And when I went into post, I would bring everything down, but it just looked a little weird. So over time, I started to learn how to actually expose properly and embrace those shadows. And now I'm basically exposing for the highlights, making sure everything's there. And if there's a silhouette in real life, there's gotta be a silhouette on the camera. And I think that's one of the main things that I've learned is like, I'm shooting and I have my camera, then I'm looking up at the scene, seeing what everything looks like, looking at the camera and trying to get it as close to natural as possible. And silhouettes are a big thing for that. I recommend you go out and try to shoot some silhouettes and mess around with exposing for the shadows and for the highlights and see what you like more. But oftentimes I think embracing the shadows is something that looks really nice. It brings a lot of emotion into your image and I think it looks really natural instead of having all these shadows be super bright whereas in real life it's not really like that. So there's different ways to nail exposure. You can use waveforms, zebras, and my favorite false color. False color gives you color values for every single IRE. That's how you can find middle gray really easily. You can use zebras for the same thing, but false color is just super consistent. If your camera doesn't have it, just get a monitor with it. I have a monitor now that has false color, so I use that all the time and it's incredible. But yeah, learning to nail exposure and use light to your advantage is easily the foundation of cinematography. One thing that I've been learning recently is to embrace the imperfections. And this is really tough for a perfectionist. My whole workflow has to be completely dialed. But mostly when it came down to filming, if I didn't get the perfect shot, I scrapped everything. And oftentimes, I was left with a couple shots that didn't meet my standards. Over time, I kind of learned just to let imperfections live and be as they are. And imperfections could be, you know, lighting or handheld shake or head crop as I'm shooting. I think if your shot can tell a story and it looks nice and it's not taken away from your story, I think it's usable. Honestly, I think I learned this from pulling away from the social media standard of filmmaking with all the transitions and everything having to be perfect. Life's not perfect, we're not perfect, and filmmaking is definitely not perfect. I think being able to let go and just let things happen and capture life as it is, is super beautiful. And that's one thing I've been learning lately and I've been having a blast creating. Next up is my favorite tip of the bunch and it's editing while shooting. And this one's mostly geared towards running gun filmmakers who don't really have a storyboard or a shot list to go by. But as I'm shooting, I am piecing together the sequence in my head. If I don't have the edit completely dialed or a storyboard, this works out great. So as I'm shooting at one location, I'm editing that whole scene in my head. As I'm getting establishing shots, mediums, tights, wides, as I'm getting everything, I'm reworking the order in my head so that when I get to post and as I'm pulling selects, I already know the order, how everything's going to be in the main timeline. So it just saves a ton of time in the end. And it's also getting you familiar with the footage. So this tip has helped me a ton with field trips and the stuff with Sam, and it's made my workflow insanely faster. Being able to be prepared like that just makes editing a lot easier. The next step kind of goes hand in hand with the last one, but it's having a mental checklist and making sure you get variety. I always joke around that my shot list always looks like wides, mediums, tights, dash, everything. I joke about it, but honestly, it's pretty true. If I don't have a tight shot list and I'm just shooting run and gun, shooting docu style, I need to make sure that I get as much coverage as I need. So when I get back to my computer, I'm not stressing out that I don't have this certain shot at this certain angle. Amateur Thomas back in the day would shoot the same angle for literally everything. And that honestly looks a little cheap. It doesn't look as professional as someone who shoots a ton of angles. So as I'm shooting a scene, I'm making sure I get wides, mediums, and tights of literally everything. So that could be landscapes, that could be the gear that we're using, subjects, transportation, textures, literally everything. So essentially when I'm in post, I have every single shot covered in all these different angles. So when I'm cutting together scenes, they don't look identical to each scene. And I think having that kind of variety can really elevate your video and feel more premium than something that was all shot pretty much at the same angle with the same lens. And being able to mix up what you're shooting on is super important too. I was primarily a gimbal shooter and I'm not the biggest fan of that anymore. I think gimbals have their place for certain shots, but those tracking long-winded wide shots aren't really my thing anymore. So I shoot everything mostly handheld and on a tripod. Being able to use a tripod mixed in with handheld has made my videos so much better. Using tripods to slow things down and really focus in on compositions is something that's a really cool tool to use, especially for 
on location stuff like field trips. Handheld just feels super in the moment. Sometimes handheld landscape shots are cool too. And I think when you mix all those things in with the different angles, focal lengths, tripod, handheld, gimbal, I think when you have a good balance of all of that, it can really add so much value to tell your story in a nice and professional way. So yeah, I think if you combine all these tips together, you'll start making better videos and you'll start to see yourself grow time and time and time again. So if you guys enjoyed this video, it's kind of a different one. If you like this video, leave a like down below, leave a comment down below on your favorite tip. I'd love to see which one stuck out to you guys. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.